about what happened. About your affliction. I know you're sorry. And I know you're probably afraid it'll happen again. I'll look after myself. You look after you. If we each do our part, we'll both be all right. I don't deserve you. Come here. with how things are between us. If you're happy, I'm happy. Are you happy? Deliriously. Couldn't have said it better myself. You are worried about this killing urge. I can see it. I will try to help you resist. But spill a single drop of my blood, and yours will flow in a gusher. I know you have your personal demons to contend with. But if I didn't make it clear before, I think you can beat this. Just don't give in. And seek help if you need it. Glad to see we all made it through the night intact promising sign that we may be able to curb those urges of yours. Now, as the saying goes, what's left undone should be left unspoken. Is there some lighter subject you wish to discuss? I see the hunger in your eyes, and I see how it worries you. It worries me too. But you are stronger than the hunger. You can resist. You will resist. I'm sure of it. Thou hast now a bosom companion. Take care that thou art not distracted on thy quest, seeking the comforts of the flesh. Don't be grumpy. I really want to make Karlark happy. Recall that in time, all becomes dust and bone. I've definitely seen that ox before. It has the same strip. No. Still incapable. Incapable of what? Not for you to know. You're the ox I met back in the grove. You were very hungry then. I saved you all, and now you have food. Well... Come close. Your mind to mine. Are you satisfied? Your mind? The unwanted visions? We are much alike. A kindred spirit. But I only wish to be an ox. Do you understand? You're trying to run from violent thoughts too, aren't you? My little secret. I'll trade you your secret for one of mine. I'm not a busybody. You ought to use me as an example, or you might get yourself in trouble. Is that a threat? That's up to you. Fine. I'll go. Good little hero. Here to see the doctor? Are we poorly? Are we desperately poorly? Or not 
not so well. But well enough to wait. Join the line, and you will be seen. I'm sick as a dog. Dark impulsions addle my mind. <clears throat> Let me check. Let me check. What's the primary symptom? Everything. I lose control of myself and kill without command. A unique disease. One which has never passed through this institution before. The surgeon will be most interested in you. Down to the theater. Be swift. Be saved. That's far enough. His thoughts invade your own, probing for purchase. Your parasite purrs in recognition. My apologies. Welcome back, true soul. What news? Welcome back? I've never been here before. My mistake? Your mind tastes familiar. Where are you reporting from? That's for your superiors to know. Right enough. You'll find Zrell in the audience chamber, true soul. She'll be wanting to hear from you. Let's hope this Zrell likes what we have to say. In her name. Praise the Absolute. Well, Flo didn't tell a lie. She said you'd find me at Here You Are. Karlak, isn't it? Now there's a name I'd hope never to hear again. What was Flo doing here? Didn't think to quiz her about her business. Karlak, who's Flo? Florenta the Garotta. A Cambion I knew back in Avernus. She was the closest thing I had to a friend. That said, she would have choked the life out of me if I ever turned my back on her. The fact that she knows where I am, where I might be going, doesn't exactly delight me. Is she a threat? Maybe. Probably. I don't know. She's a half-devil. Impossible to read. I wouldn't have given her the time of day, but even I needed a laugh once in a while. What can I say? The bitch had good jokes. Enough chatter. Your friend gave me three soul coins, said I could sell them if I wanted. But if I kept them for you, she'd consider it a favor owed. Soul coins, huh? This could come in handy. We shouldn't take anything offered by a devil. Too risky. Cambion? But you're right. Then again, they could really come in handy. Oh, let's have the soul coins then. Sure. But she did have a condition. For every coin you take, you've got to hear the story of the soul trapped inside. There you have it. Flo came all this way just to try to make me feel like shit. Clever use of her time. Memorized a bunch of sad stories on her behalf, did you? Didn't need to. Your Flo did some devil woo-woo and stuck them in my head. Couldn't forget now if I wanted to. Do you want the coins or not? Fine. Get on with it then. First coin's got the soul of a woman named Mavery. She was born to a cruel mother, and a violent father, and three evil brothers, all named Balder. She never knew a day of love in all her life. When she was a girl of 15, she sold her soul to Tiamat in exchange for someone who would love her unconditionally. She got what she asked for. A fellow named Clint, destined to be her soulmate, struck by a cart and died a few moments after clapping eyes on our Mavery. Poor guy. The scud of her soul is yours now. Thanks, I guess. 
We'll put that coin to better use than Tiamat would have. <laughs> sure you will. This one has got the soul of a man named Frakes. Lived in a village near Neverwinter. Hit hard by the worst hunger in a thousand years. Frakes called out for help. Prayed for his children to have meat to eat. Zariel answered. Made old Frakes grow flesh upon flesh after flesh. His wee ones had all the meat they could stomach. He should have known. Better to die a thousand deaths than let Zariel into your life. We'll put his coin to good use. He'll help us rid the realm of people like Zariel. <laughs> Whatever you need to tell yourself. Last one's got the soul of a little boy named Ongear. Eight years old. He liked playing in the sun with his friends. That's all I know. That's all? That's all. Oh, and this slip of scratch. Well, thanks, Flo. Hearing a bunch of desperate horror has ruined my day. Which I suppose was the point. You got three soul coins out of the bargain, didn't you? I'd quit whinging if I were you. I did my part. That means our business is done. Unless you've got actual gold to hand. We are each of us threads in her design. Even those we once called monsters. We're in the belly of the beast now. Try not to do anything too heroic. So you had a friend in Avernus. You never said. You saw the extent of Flo's friendship. She'll lend you a hand, long as she can crush your spirit while she's at it. I knew never to let my guard down around her. But she always made me laugh, even when I least wanted to. If she'd been completely different from who she was, we might have been real friends. She gave you a note. What did it say? Nothing worth reading. Cambian manipulation at its most obvious. Pity. Sounds like she meant something to you. In whatever small way. I guess she did. Much as it makes me want to puke to admit it. <sighs> devils, you know. Fucking devils. They really screw with you, don't they? Night Warden Minthara, your crime is incompetence, and your sentence is death. No! Make her passing slow, Disciple Zarel. Be creative. Ugh. Don't kill her. She's a loyal servant of the Absolute. As the General's attention shifts to you, a memory stirs. A memory of this room, and his voice raised in anger. I'm surprised to see you again, true soul. You are here to assist and not to meddle, I trust. I would remind you that while in my halls, you obey me, just as you would any other chosen. What say you about our Minthara? It is fitting that one mad dog should judge another. You know me. You know of my madness. Better than you know yourself, it seems. But we are here to speak of Minthara, not you. She's a valuable soldier. She serves the Absolute faithfully. A pity, then, that her faith was so inadequate. Take her below. No! Please! Mercy! Please! <laughs> Bye-bye, princess. Kill the goblins, too. What? No! You creaking old bag of shit! <laughs> I'm so sorry, 
my lord, she's an unbeliever outside my control. Try again. Dispose of the rest as you see fit. Or better yet, let us take advantage of our surprising guest and their particular creative genius. I'm sure the results will send a clear message to the troops on the importance of discipline. Of course, my lord. Thank you. You heard the General. The goblins are yours. Deal with them however you wish. I'm really allowed to do anything? They are yours. You can release them, kill them, or feed them to each other for all I care. Just deal with them. Here, in the seat of the Absolute's power, your authority over them is complete. They will obey any command. Report to me upstairs when you're done. Please! You gotta help me! For old time's sake! <laughs> oh, this will be... No. They may deserve death, but not in my hand. Not yet, anyway. Guards, release them. Oh, praise the absolute! And praise her true soul! You did the right thing. I'm sure those nasties deserved a bollocking, but we're no executioners. Let's go see what Zarel makes of it. In another lifetime, you were greeted in this throne room like a god. Not the living wreck you are now. Your disgrace has something to do with this Catherick. You yearn to flay him until he forgets himself, as you have. With difficulty. You banish the pooling evil that bewitches your quivering limbs. Perhaps parts of you were scattered in this spire. Time to knit yourself together. The seat of the Absolute's power. Occupied by a general that cannot be killed. But his followers are flesh and blood. We must learn what fuels his power. Yours is a face I shred in my dreams. One who kicked the steel claw as if I were some stray. I am a champion hunter. When I lick my pelt, I taste blood. Fortunately for you, the slithering vermin I hunt is my attention. For now. What do you mean I kicked you? We've never met. The Death Walker passed through here before. I know your scent. All were silent before you, but I dared to snarl! You skulked like you owned the place, trespassing on my domain! Maybe if I try to remember what was forgotten... You excavate the empty caverns of your useless mind, shoveling, dozing, blasting through the smooth brain. How the kitty cat mewled when your boot stamped upon its tail. You are the black cat crossing the path of the living. The pleasure of the memory dribbles out of your leaking skull into the very air. Damn it all! Not again! A memory won at the cost of a piece of your mind. You were in this tower before, that much is sure. Feels like I've lost something. A spasm grips your chest. Your strength falters. An emptiness grows within you, Paladin. Something has been lost. Broken your oath, Paladin. At the close of day, I will be waiting for you. We have much to discuss. 
like a rope drawn taut beneath the blade, the connection simply snaps. No! Barnabas, darling. No! There's an illithid parasite in that corpse. All trace of restraint is gone. Barnabas has tasted blood and wants more. To your surprise, instead of ravishing you, he grovels with a howl of pining awe. Many, many die. I'm back. Why have we met? Excellent timing, true soul. The goblins, tell me how they suffered. No, better yet, show me. Her mind enters yours abruptly, flickering across your memories in a blaze of excitement. She sees the goblins walking free, and a burning rage fans across your mind like wildfire. Explain yourself. You said I could do whatever I wanted with them, so I did. I didn't expect you to do that. Let's see if there's anything interesting in this brain of yours. She parts the folds of your mind again, touching your wants and hopes, tasting them. Every emotion soaks into her mind's palate, but there is purpose to her exploration. She is searching for proof of your faith. She is formidable. But how many days of passion will you get out of her? How many nights? The Absolute will give you something that can last. With the Absolute, your fantasies can become more real than flesh. The pleasures of the mind can surpass those of the body. You, not you. Lord Ketherick may think you pose no threat to him in your disgrace, but I know the things you've done. Keep your bloody thoughts to yourself and your head down. Please, you have to help me. I really don't know what's going on. You have the same black tongued sense of humor as ever. I don't believe you for a heartbeat. A fool, perhaps but a dangerous fool. Whatever your business, a warning. None may speak to the prisoners. Disciple Balthazar was most clear. Our people suffered enough in Ilteril, only to be locked up here by one of their own. Aren't you bothered? Anyone who refutes the Absolute is an enemy of mine, true soul. You would do well to remember that. That's curious. Through a narrow crack in the wall, you hear something shift against stone. The pulse of a crawling, living thing. You can't quite catch a glimpse, but you recognize this feeling. The same alien presence you felt on the Nautiloid. Your awareness unfolds, expanding through every wall in the tower, every mind. A vast living network extending down into the dark, where something wakes. What is it? What now? It's a trap! Tendrils snap like iron cords around your wrist. That presence in your mind looms large, closer now. The tendrils tighten, and suddenly you are elsewhere. The presence is no longer approaching you circling you, observing you.
Witch, what does it mean? as if it struggles to compress its vast being down into terms you can understand. This is the voice they have given me, to better speak to your kind without breaking you. I was once a servant of the Grand Design, now I'm a slave to theirs. But you... You were the jeweled hope for their design. But now... You are their flaw. Who are they? You abandoned me. You left me the slave of the puny chosen. Used to bind this world. But I cannot bind you. You must come to me so I can become myself again. A world away, the grip on you tightens. <laughs> A desperate, drowning thing that pulls you down with it. Thank you for allowing me to come here and for bringing me back to myself. Each memory that returns to me is more disturbing than the last. The things that I did in the name of the Absolute. The things that were done to me. They broke my mind. Someone in this cult might have broken mine too. We are going to break them back. Precisely. While our tadpoles live, and the cult have the means to control them, we will never be safe. We must eradicate them. Starting with General Thorm. I mean Ketherick. My deference to him is a habit that will die hard, I fear. There's something out there. this fresh entertainment but you're too fresh for this place aren't you there's a whiff of the surface to you holy shit an orphan powerful devils i wouldn't get on their bad side without a good reason you tiefling you've got the stench of the hells about you the stench of home and a whiff of the surface besides the servant of zaria if I'm not mistaken, I'd know the stench of her infernal machinery anywhere. What do you know of infernal machinery? Only what I can smell. And whatever engine burns within you is grinding to an inevitable explosion. Burning and fear. <laughs> you reek with it. Well-chewed spider carcass oozes on the ground. Fresh bite marks, an old puncture wound, and a faint pulse of something not entirely natural. The meat is oozing, but not with blood. It's been dosed with a potion. Sulfur, decay, and a thin whiff of something unexpectedly fragrant. The meat tastes 
of rot and sour milk. Your stomach lurches, but your loins tingle. Was that arousal? Rotten meat. That's what gets you going. Well, to each their own. Honestly, what did you think was going to happen? Do I smell beef? In amongst the rot is an unmistakable sweetness. Succubus spittle. The meat is charmed. Unshackled from shadows. She will rise in moonlit glory and carve a path of brightness to the accursed one's second death. So saith the wise Alondo. That beacon of angelic wrath has taken the fight to Catherick on the rooftop. In the first line of defense are dead. But storming the tower won't be easy. And if we wait too long, Catherick will gather his strength and retaliate. For now, though, he's on the back foot for the first time since he returned from the grave. This is it. The spearhead moment. You brought us this far. So how shall we proceed? I reap every soul in this tower until we are the last creature standing. <laughs> Sounds like something my scimitars would say. <laughs> They'll strike true. See to it you'll do the same. At the ready, Harpers! In this alight, there will be victory. In this alight, we will avenge the fallen! <sighs> The time has come. Gatherick will taste of death at last. You dare show yourself here after all you've done? You have betrayed me. You have betrayed General Thorm. You have betrayed our god! And for what? These harpers. Moonrise will be their tomb. And in death, you will all serve the Absolute. I will never serve the Absolute again, Zrel. And I will take your prattling tongue as a reminder of this moment. Step aside, Zarel, or I'll lay you alive. Where's the fun in that? Boys, make this traitor bleed. Bring death. <sighs> Lashes. Balthazar let one of his walking carcasses lapse from his control. Let's ferry them back. Wait! By the poon lord. It's you! I thought I'd never see you again. I wanted to keep you for myself. But they shipped you away. Who was I to you when I was here? Before I was infected. You talk! And you are aware. How is that possible? Oh, but what an arresting voice you have. You're not supposed to be here, special one. That's not right. But I don't want to damage you. You were my very first, after all. I learned everything about the parasites from you. I remember finding you close to death. Beaten black and blue on the floor of this sanctum. It must have been a few hours after the tadpole was placed in your skull. How you got here was a total mystery. But I stitched you up just enough to keep you alive, then placed you within your crib. I kept you as mine, until you were needed by our superiors. We had such a close bond. I opened you up endlessly with my scalpels and got lost in your insides. This is where I was left? After someone infected me? I was not behind it. I do not know. But whoever did it, I'm so glad they left you here for me. Truthfully, I'm not surprised to see you found your way back here, all by yourself. I always knew you were clever. It has never been the same with another. 
All the other victims who come here just meekly obey. You thrashed. You fought. You were indomitable. But as special as you are, you shouldn't be swanning around here, acting as if free will is yours again. We're going to kill you, sweet one. But I promise I will stay with you afterwards. Lashes, bring this one back to my table and prepare my knives for a long night of experiments. Not even the worst! She is but the hack doctor who half pieced you together after whatever caused your head to get in this mess. Someone else must have attacked you in the midst of whatever you were doing down here. This necromancer was a grunt in the scheme of the horrors enacted against you. That attacker is the source. In the heart of all these membranes, there was a dagger awaiting you all along. But from who? This pod has a different air to its chitinous cavern. Dust and dirt are gathered on the inside. It's broken beyond repair, seemingly by a blunt impact, as if whoever was inside threw themselves against it in an effort to break out. Your brain hurls an image towards you, your own head, blood gushing down in front of your eyes. Banging your fists on a chamber until half your fingers were broken. How long inside? Days, months, lifetimes. The parasite was inserted into your head and your body crammed into a pod long before you were moved to the nautiloid. A laughing woman taunting you. She betrayed you. Who was she? You said it was under control. It isn't you I answer to, Gortash. Motherfucker. Gortash! Oh, the general voice. Is this where we salute? Salute, yes. With cleavers through his blood-starved flesh. How it crawls with failure. Like flies on lick wet carrion. You forget yourself, Orin. I've played my part. You've built an army for our masters, true enough. But what of the astral prison? A rogue, true soul, flaunting it under your nose all this time. And you ran from him. Sure that they would follow and deliver it into my hands here. If you would cease these distractions. The distractions have been yours, Ketherick. Perhaps we never should have dug your daughter up. <sighs> so you haven't lost your edge. But you're still not as sharp as Orin, I wager. The Slayer against the Undying One. That'd be fun to see. His crypt breath sings to my sinews again, 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 again. <laughs> He must lead the murder march to Baldur's grave. You saw Gortash, didn't you? What the fuck was he doing down there? Is all of this because of him? The tadpole, the absolute. How? I don't know how this plot fits together yet, but we will stop him. I was his bodyguard. I looked after him with my life. I trusted him more than anything. He gave me away to Zariel just for kicks. He ruined my life just when it was starting. And now he'll use up the entire Sword Coast. He has to die. And I'm gonna be the one who kills him. We'll do it together, whatever it takes. He 
can't get away with what he's done to me, to us. He won't get away with it. I wish we could stay and see what this place will be like without the shadows. I bet it's beautiful. No rest for the wicked, huh? Tell me more about your relationship with Gortash. He got his claws into me early. I was a wild kid, <laughs> brawling my way through the city. One of my mates got wind of a bit of work guarding some indoorsy type with lots of enemies. Seemed like easy money, so I went in for it. He took one look at me and said I was perfect. I liked that. Not like that, you know. Just, it felt like a good fit. I kept him safe and he paid me well. Well enough to move into a better neighborhood and put something away for the future. My future. I respected him. Trusted him. And he returned that trust, that respect. His life was in my hands and I took that seriously. The whole thing with Zauriel happened so fast. I had no idea what had gone down until it was over. One minute I was in Baldur's Gate, a happy, healthy, not quite kid. The next, I was burning up in a Vernus with an engine for a heart. Zariel laughed, said she paid him well for my services. She'd wanted to test her new machine, and he said I'd be able to handle it. He was right. Sometimes I wish he weren't. Evil. Evil bastard. Thy hunger denied. Saluna's faithful yet shines. The balance shifts. Thou hast seen with thine own eyes and felt in thine urges. The dead three unite. There are depths to this alliance yet unplumbed. Consider, mortal. Do illithids possess souls? I admit, I haven't thought about it. Thou shalt think about it now, and I shall give the answer. Mind flayers are so. Yet, the three amass an illithid army void of apostolic souls that could imbue them with power. A flock without souls, yet to what end, O oh, tempted one? This is the question thou must come to answer. Until such time, be availed of my services. You know of these urges. What can you tell me? Nothing thou dost not already know. Yes, Bane, Lord of Darkness. Baal, Lord of Murder. Merkel, Lord of Bones. Once judged, ascended, then vanquished as one and as three the alliance is reforged mortal the plains thus quake and the gods shudder we leave the heart of the absolute alive thanks to you you did well to defeat Ketherick, but Ketherick was only the first to fall. There are many more battles ahead, and they will not be so easily won. You will need allies. I'm worried about what I might do to my allies. Whatever you might do to one cannot be worse than what the Chosen will unleash on all. And you are the one who could prevent it. The curse has been lifted, the lands cleansed of the shadows. 
Kethrick's reign of living death is over. Your courage has been tested, and in this, at least,